this question relates to blood transfusion and whether it is useful for recipients and for the person who is giving or donating the blood. Uh, I have written about uh, blood transfusion you know, in my book Timeless Secrets of Health and Rejuvenation, but I would like to point out that the recipient of a blood transfusion is always at a greater risk of developing infection or recurrence of the very disease that they are treated with. In fact, uh, there is a f up to four or five times fourfold increase of recurrence rate of a cancer after blood transfusions. Also, there is a much higher uh, reoccurrence or an infection uh, that otherwise would not occur if the blood transfusion had not taken place. So I, I'm very, very uh, yeah, careful recommending uh, blood transfusion and uh, there are alternatives uh, such as hemodilution, for example, um, or uh, yes, you, that means uh, giving a saline solution or a sugar solution to the patient which has a similar or even better effects uh, without the side effects. And then there is auto uh, transfusion, which is used uh, yeah, in a way that, that the blood is taken uh, from the patient before the operation and then is simply transferred back into the patient, which are much uh, more yeah, safe and better practices. For the person who is donating the blood, um, there's, yeah, th that's a double-edged sword. Uh, you, you don't know, uh, you know whether it can affect you negatively or positively. Um, I've recommended in the past for people who have very high blood pressure uh, or suffer from congestive heart problems uh, or blood uh, you know, poisoning that they give or let blood. And uh, it, it's uh, you know, g getting down the hemocrit value uh, dramatically which benefits the patient and may save the person actually from a heart attack. So uh, there are individuals uh, that benefit from donating blood on a regular basis if they have uh, such problems, but for the regular person who doesn't suffer from a particular health problem, it may uh, put an extra stress on the system because it is uh, pretty much unnatural to uh, let one's own blood. Um, and. Uh, yeah, it, it is an injury uh, that then requires a lot of effort on behalf of the body, the liver, uh, the spleen, and uh, the blood-forming organ, the small intestine, to actually uh, you know, have to put all the energy on that, and uh, that means there is very little energy for other things. So temporarily, uh, this can cause uh, some difficulties. In the long term, there is no real damage from that, from giving blood, but uh, I would not give my blood to anyone else because uh, there are DNA coatings in, in my blood that may interfere with that of the person's you know, you know, blood and the recipient's body uh, because you're, you're transplanting something from someone who is very unique into someone who is also very unique and the two, they don't match. Uh, even if there's you know, a genetic match, uh, it, it does uh, interfere because there are other things in the blood uh, that are you know, close to you know, what we can call cellular memories uh, that are interfering or not harmonizing with the cellular memories in the blood of the recipient. So there can be complications for the patient, and we have seen that many times. Many doctors are shying away from blood transfusions now because of the high incidence of serious complications and potentially death as a result of blood transfusions. So I hope uh, this answers your question and um, I hope you're having a beautiful day.